I'm Rick Lovell, the Assistant Director of the Stewardship Group under the direction of Brother Steve Jury. I also serve as the Vice President and Senior Loan Officer for the UPC Loan Fund. Prior to coming to work for the Loan Fund, I was a pastor for nine years. Before that, I was a banker for 15 years. Those two things combined have allowed me to have a very unique perspective as I review church loan applications and as I help churches with their finances. We recently analyzed the financial statements and the demographics of over 200 churches in 32 states. Now, this sector of churches very closely mirrors that of the entire fellowship, all 4,000 churches. We've come up with some statistics and some information that we believe should be shared with the general population. It's very eye-opening when you take a look at all of these, what they have in common, especially those churches that are growing. People ask me a lot of time, what do I see in churches that are growing? What do they have maybe that another church doesn't? Okay? One of the things that I want to focus on is the fact that it's not that growing churches have more money, but what I see is I see very good management of money. The churches that are growing, the churches that are expanding, they seem to have a better control over how their money is managed instead of just worrying all the time about how much money they have. This, uh, these churches that we looked at, they ranged in attendance from 12 to 650. So it is a wide variety of churches. Um, I think the median was about 95 members, which is the most common uh, attendance category of the United Pentecostal churches. This is, this is something that I believe we should all take a close look at. So wherever you find yourself, the size of your church, I believe all of this is going to apply to you. I want to share with you three takeaways that I've observed through all of the analysis that we've done. Let's back up just for a moment, though. We preach it, we teach it, we push it, we post about it. Revival, church growth. Everybody's looking for it. Everybody's believing for it. There are numerous prophecies about it. But the question I want to ask you is, how are you preparing for the fulfillment of those prophecies? How are you preparing for what you're preaching? You can't just focus on discipleship and, and going out in the community and attracting people. That is a very integral part of it. But that can't be all you focus on. One of the things that I've found is that there is an area of struggle in church leadership when it comes to the management of finances, even the management of facilities. I could talk a lot about Bible studies, and I could talk a lot about you know, some of the programs that we use to grow the church where I pastored, but that's not the intent of this. I want to show you what I've seen and what I've observed with churches that are growing. And I'm even going to point out a couple things where I've found that pastors are struggling with, and churches may have maybe hitting a, 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 a wall, if you will. And I want to help you get over that. As a pastor... Your number one role is to feed the sheep. No doubt about that. But we have to acknowledge that you're also there to oversee and administer facilities, finances, the needs of your membership, and it can all be very overwhelming. I've talked to several pastors that are great teachers. They're incredible preachers. And they will admit that when it comes to financial management, they're not so strong with it. They're willing to admit, hey, I need some help. And I love it when a pastor admits he needs help with this. Um, it typically tells me that this is a pastor who's willing to learn, he's willing to grow, which is going to reflect on his church. When we look at where a church can help itself in growth, I want to point out three things that maybe you haven't thought of before. The first one, churches that have experienced sustained success in their growth. One thing I see in common is they all have very strong financial management systems. As their church has matured, so has their bookkeeping. Not just their bookkeeping, but how they think about their money. All of that is maturing along with the size of the congregation. I, I've received some loan applications from some churches that uh, they haven't stepped into that next level accounting, is, is what I want to refer to it as. But I want to encourage you, think about a way where you can feel like you have a better control of your money, okay? What would be put in place that could help you feel that sense of uh, control, if you will? Compare that to the feeling of being out of control, not knowing where your money is, not knowing how your money flows, all of those kind of things. 
the one thing that I would like to encourage you to do is establish an accounting software program, okay? Now, I'm not going to recommend specific programs. I am going to name a few, and the ones I'm going to name are the ones that I see the most frequently. Um, you make your own choice on what you want to use. But I will tell you this. Churches that use QuickBooks, like QuickBooks Online, especially that one, um, I see a lot of positives that come out of that, especially if I'm asking for a report from them. Uh, maybe as I'm reviewing a loan application, I need a specific uh, uh, income statement or a balance sheet, something like that. I can ask them for it. It's literally just a couple clicks of the button, and they've got it. They don't have to call six people. They don't have to wait around for two or three weeks. It makes it easy to access information. Um, other programs such as Aplos is another one. Uh, I believe ChurchTrack has an accounting component to it also. Research all of them. But my encouragement to you is get something in place that's going to allow you to have a sense of control over how the money is flowing through your accounts. Not only that, it's also going to help you establish budgets, which I'm going to talk more about in just a moment. But whenever you have these solid accounting principles in place, that allows the church board members, that allows the pastors, the decision makers, whoever it might be, to make an educated decision anytime they have to make financial choices. The second thing that I see when it comes to management and software programs is high quality church management software programs, okay? Programs such as Breeze, Faith Teams, again, Church Track, Realm, um, any of those, and I know there's more out there, and feel free to research all of those. But the difference in the two is when you look at QuickBooks, that is just accounting, okay? But when you look at Breeze or some of those other programs, you're looking at a program that's going to help you manage your day-to-day -day operations. It's going to help you manage your volunteer staff, uh, the multiple calendars that people operate with inside the church. Um, not only that, it's going to help you manage the membership contributions. Obviously, with the, the IRS rules, you know, when you have contribution statements, there's certain ways that those need to be prepared. Um, programs like Breeze, Realm, some of those, they, they do an incredible job of preparing those statements for you. Um, the programs that work with your accounting, such as QuickBooks, there's a way to create a, a contribution statement through there, but it's very difficult. And again, I would encourage you to have both types of systems in place. They work together, okay? And when you look at what you're buying, I know there's a lot of people that, that say, well, we just want something that's going to help us right now, okay? There's a lot of these programs that they'll tell you that they will work up to 50 members, up to 100 members, up to 1,000 members. And I know, I know of some pastors that have had a tendency to, to utilize the ones that's the smaller number. I want to encourage you to not take that approach. Think about what's going to help you get to the next level. Again, we're talking about preparing for growth. What systems can you put in place that will work for what you have right now? But to be honest with you, it might be overkill, but that's okay because it's going to help you grow and expand. Okay, It's like if you know you've got 100 people, you don't build a building that only holds 100 people. You want to build a building that holds more than that. Okay, The same principle applies with how you look at the financial management software programs. Uh, again, as, I, as we've analyzed all these churches, as we've looked at their demographics, Again, one of the things that I found that the strong growing churches all have in common is they have a very matured, if you will, or advanced financial management or church management software system in place. Now, I've talked to several pastors about this, and I've heard several of them say, well, what can I use that's free? Please don't look down that road, okay? I've seen so many pastors that have ran into so many headaches when they try to use the free programs. Um, you get what you pay for. And if you pay zero, somewhere down the road, you're going to realize you've hit some roadblocks with that system. Don't be afraid to put money where the program is going to help you the most. You know, I, I've, I believe this is true. We've all said it about anything. You can afford whatever you value. You will figure out a way to pay for something you have a lot of value in. Accounting software programs church management software programs, I assure you that the money that you invest in high-quality programs, it's going to come back to you. It's going to relieve headaches. It's going to make other processes a lot easier. It's actually going to help you reduce the amount of staff that you might need to do certain projects. It's going to come back, and it's going to be a blessing to you. Think about, again, how these systems can work together. Okay, 
Um, the church that I pastored, I, I had a secretary that focused on QuickBooks. I had another lady that focused on, uh, I think we, we used Realm. So we had a, that church management software program, and they worked together, and both of them were able to help me um, as we processed through all of that. My final thought on high-quality uh, software programs, whether it's the UPC Church Loan Fund or honestly any bank that's out there, if you're going to borrow money, your lender is going to ask you for a history of your finances. They're going to ask you for financial statements, specifically a profit and loss sheet and a balance sheet. They're going to ask you for those because they're going to want to see, even here at the loan fund, we're going to want to see how have you managed your finances over the last several seasons, the trends of, of, of as we've gone through COVID, how have you managed through all of that? And you're going to be able to show us through your profit and loss sheet and your balance sheet. I have had a couple pastors that, um, you know, they, they don't have a lot of accounting experience and they don't understand what those are. So let me break it down just a little bit more. When you hear the term profit and loss sheet, some people call it an income expense statement, a cash flow statement. There's a lot of different names for that. That is a statement that's going to tell us how your money flowed through each particular category, okay? Make sure those are detailed. We're going to want to see how money flowed in your tithing account, in your general operating account, how it, maybe you have a separate missions account, how it flowed through there. When it gets to the expense side, we're going to want to see how much went to payroll, how much goes to rent or mortgage payments, how much goes to your utilities, how much money are you spending on speakers or one-time expenses, things like that, that we can look at as, as we decision your loan. You want to have a good system in place where you can show us in one piece of paper, this is how the money flows through our accounts. When you go to the balance sheet, all a balance sheet is is a snapshot. It's a picture at any given time. So if we ask for a balance sheet as of December 31st, we just want to know what was in all of your accounts on December 31st. So again, a profit and loss, that tells us how the money flows. The balance sheet tells us what it looks like at any given moment. You really need to have software programs in place that can provide your lenders, your bankers, with those type of information very quickly. The other thing I would mention on this, I've seen this also, is churches who may not have um, qualified staff to be able to do that kind of things for the pastor. Um, there are several CPAs and bookkeepers that are members of United Pentecostal Churches, even some pastors, who are helping a lot of churches right now. Um, there's so many, I don't even want to start naming names right now, but they don't charge very much money. And knowing that you've got a professional bookkeeper or a professional that understands how church finance works, I would strongly encourage you to research that option for you also. Um, anything that you put in place that's going to help you get a better control over the finances is going to be a benefit to your church into the future. I want to move now to the second thing I've observed. Churches that have had sustained growth, and specifically those that have been able to handle expansion projects, um, you know, maybe they added on to their church building, maybe they bought a separate annex, maybe they built a new building. Those churches that have grown their facilities, the one thing they all had in common was they had a formal savings plan in place. They had a building fund, they had a building program. They had something in place that allowed them to allocate their funds into something that they were saving for the future, okay? Uh, for a personal reference, the church I pastored, we had a system in place where we allocated 5% of the profit each quarter into a savings account. So at the end of the quarter, the secretary would go through all the finances. She would see what our net profit was. Whatever that amount was, we took 5% of it and stuck it in a savings account. Over the nine years that I was there, we were able to purchase the lot across the street from us, we were able to turn it into a parking lot. We were also able to install uh, screens and a computer for all the audio visual needs of the church. We did all of that out of that savings account. What that meant was we didn't have to have a fundraiser. We didn't have to have a bake sale. I didn't have to go and try to take up a special offering. None of that had to happen because we had an established savings plan in place. What can happen is donors can get weary of giving. And I would encourage you to have that plan in place so you know you always have that to fall back on. Because nobody accidentally ends up with $100,000 in their savings account. You do it because you get intentional. Finally, number three, 
One of the things that I see pastors struggle with is a church budget, establishing a budget. What does a budget look like? A budget, we're showing a sample of it to you here right now. 30% to salaries, 30% to rent or mortgage, 15% to utilities, and 25% to all other things that you're going to do. Now, if you would like more information about how to establish a budget, maybe working off this one, or maybe we can design something else for you, please give me a call. I'd be happy to talk with you about this. Because as churches grow, these numbers can change. I want to encourage you to take a strong look at your budget and think about what can we really afford to do. You can use this sample budget plan to create a savings account. You can use this to establish uh, better payroll systems. You can use this to do a whole lot of things. And I would encourage you to, again, give us a call. We'd be happy to walk you through it. Think about your intentionality. Think about what it takes to get to where you want to go. Again, I want to encourage you, establish strong financial management systems. Number two, create a plan for saving money. And number three, establish a budget and stick to it. These are all things that I have seen personally. These 200 churches, those that were successful, what did they have in common? It was those three things. If you have any questions or you would like to learn more about any of this, you can reach me. Uh, call in the headquarters office. You can call me directly, 636-229-7947. You're welcome to email me, rlovell at upci.org, or reach me through our website, upcilonefund.org. Any of those processes, we're here to help you. My calling, to be honest about it, is to be a helper of the harvest. My role is to help churches all across our organization grow, develop, and see success in the kingdom. We're here to help you have revival. May God bless you as you prepare for the growth God has given you.